SNES Clash Yuck. Hello everybody, my name is Mathis, and if you know anything about me, or have been following me for any amount of time, then you know that I am a huge fan of collecting things. I've always really enjoyed collecting things, and I've done videos talking about uh, my collections in the past. Uh, for a while, I really collected magic cards pretty heavily, but I forgot what a money sink that was. And uh, on top of that, my big, my big thing I've always enjoyed collecting is video games, and, and over the past year or so, I've really enjoyed collecting old retro style PC stuff and a, a ton of SNES stuff, which is why I'm so excited that I got my SNES Classic in the mail. Yes, I got one. Um, if you watched the Roundtable podcast, you may have seen that I uh, got it live on the podcast. So, as somebody who grew up in the era of the SNES, the NES, the Genesis, and all that stuff, I was really eager to get my hands on this. I, I played a ton of NA NES stuff, um, but most of my memories and my nostalgia comes from SNES and the Genesis. Now, I grew up specifically with the Sega Genesis, uh, but every single one of my friends had an SNES, and they would either bring the console over, or I would go to their house, and I probably played more SNES than I did my Genesis at some point, just by virtue of hanging out with my friends, and I hung out with them all the time as a kid. So when I saw this got launched, and it has 21 games in it, I could not help uh, but try and get my hands on one, and I, I got lucky. Uh, yeah, no, full disclosure, I paid full price for this. Nintendo doesn't love me enough, probably because I say bad, naughty words in my videos, to send me one for free. So much like a thousand other people on YouTube, I'm going to unbox this thing here on video, uh, show off what comes inside of it, kind of give my impressions in the build of this thing, and then I'll go off and play a little bit, and I'll come back and kind of just give you my impressions on the uh, the software itself. So right away, here's the front of the box. It's uh, You've seen it uh, a million times, I'm sure. You got the sides over there. You can see right in the picture how small that thing is planning on being. And then, of course, the back of it, of the box itself, which is very glossy. All 21 games listed. And while it's not 30, the 21 games that are on this thing are are pretty freaking top-notch. Uh, we'll just go from bottom to top. We've got Contra 3, The Alien Wars. Uh, we've got ourselves Donkey Kong Country, Earthbound, Final Fantasy 3, F-Zero, Kirby's Dream Course, Kirby Superstar, Mega Man X, Secret of Mana, Star Fox, Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting, Super Castlevania 4, Super Ghosts and Goblins, or rather, sorry, Super Ghouls and Goblins, Super Mario Kart, Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars, a personal favorite of mine, Super Mario World, Super Metroid, Super Punch-Out, Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past, Yoshi's Island, and... Star Fox 2, the originally unreleased version of the game. And from what I understand, in order to actually unlock Star Fox 2 in the game, you have to beat the very first level of the original Star Fox and then it'll unlock. So let's start cracking this thing open and seeing what's inside. I don't want to be too rough. I kind of want to be gentle because I like the box a lot. And if I'm not playing it, or like while I'm not playing the system, I'll probably end up keeping it inside this thing for display purposes. Or I'll just put it up on my shelf next to my uh, original Super Nintendo. Which I do have. I have an OG Super Nintendo. And thanks to a viewer who sent me a ton of SNES games, I have a rather big collection for the SNES as well. Um, but a lot of the games that are in here that I, I'd love to have, like Earthbound, are like hundreds of dollars and I do not have them. So right away, as you can tell, it's actually going to be pretty small uh, right out the gate. It comes with uh, the manual on the front. And then it's it's it actually is just reminiscent of unboxing like a proper video game console. Well, granted, this is kind of a glorified plug and play, and I realize that uh, the fact it has Nintendo's quality, man. It's got its build quality, and uh, you're not going to get you know you can emulate things, but there's something really special about having something like this in your house. Um, it's just really nice. So first things first is the thing right up front that we had there, and it looks like we've got our warranty agreement. Nothing special. And then this right here is basically how to set it up, which is, again, pretty plug and play. But the cool thing about what this is, is that it unfolds into a, like, one of those old 90s video game posters, man. Hopefully that focuses nicely. The light that I'm using is, is reflecting off this stuff rather nicely. The back is all instructions, but it's just got a list and, and screenshots of, of some of the games on here. Not all of them, just some of the popular stuff. And it, it just looks like... Your old 90s nostalgia, baby. So this is the system itself. It's still in the foam. And right away, I mean, you can tell it's it's actually very tiny. We'll do a controller comparison here at the end, but there it is, right there. Um, I know a lot of people prefer... Here you go. I know a lot of people prefer the UK version of the SNES and the Japan version of the SNES because they think this is ugly and it yellows in time. But I'm going to go against the grain here and say... I prefer this version of it, and uh, 
a lot of that can be attributed to the fact that it's nostalgia. Like, this is what I grew up looking at and playing for years on end. Uh, this is the model that I know, and while I see the appeal of what the look of the UK and the European one looks like, this is my SNES, you know? This is what I grew up with. This is what I remember playing for hours and hours and hours and hours from Power Rangers to Mario to Mario Kart and, and, and Superstar and all that stuff. Um, unfortunately, much like the NES Classic, there is no way to, like, push down where the, uh, the actual cartridge goes, the eject button doesn't work, and all that other stuff. This, uh, the power button and the reset button work, this will turn it on. And the pad, the reset button, from my understanding, sends you back to the main menu, the, the main, uh, console area. And in the back, we've got ourselves the plugs for HDMI and power. Other way around, HDMI and power. And then the controllers go... Ah, oh, the controllers, this flips up, so the controllers go right where the controller ports normally go. I'm oh, sorry, it flips down, actually. And it go, they go right in there, and as you can tell, they're actually the plugs that are used in the Wii system. Uh, Nunchuck, Classic Controller, and all that stuff, so I assume the Classic Controller and all that would work on this if you wanted another controller, or you lost the controllers that, you, that, that were given to you. Uh, and it flips right back up, and clicks right into place. Um, feels pretty solid, it's light and it's tiny. Um, I'm a, this, this feels a little bit loose and a little wobbly, the, uh, the cover for the controllers. So I'm a little bit nervous, like, pressing in, because I don't want to break it. There we go, they're all set. Um, but overall, like, look, this thing is, is, it fits in my, the palm of my hand, no problem. And I, again, I know this is just a glorified emulator, but it's got Nintendo's quality, man. This is a really nicely put together, uh, system. And oddly, the thing I'm most excited about, while I was excited about the system itself, it was the controllers, the thing you're gonna be holding for the majority or all of the time you're playing this thing. Uh, I have a, a few original Super Nintendo controllers from that era uh, that were Nintendo made, and I have a few third-party ones as well as part of my collection. Um, but to get a brand new Super Nintendo controller right from Nintendo is, um, you know, something you didn't think that was gonna happen like a couple of years ago. And uh, right away, like, it, it just, it looks like a Super Nintendo controller. Like, that is practically spot on. A little glossy. Um, and and it, the build quality feels really, really nice. It feels solid, doesn't feel cheap or, or flimsy at all. Um, the shoulder buttons have a nice click to them. They feel, they feel good. Um, and all the buttons, I mean, it's, it's weird to review a controller, but honest to God, like, it feels really good. Does not feel like they, they, they skimped out on the production quality of these controllers, which is important to me. A lot of the third-party ones I've gotten over the years have not been as fantastic, so I'm glad. And the important thing, what people were saying, is the wire itself. Uh, the wire is about, I, I want to say it's double the length of the NES Classic controller, but again, I never got one, so I don't know. Um, but you can just see this thing is, is much much longer uh, than the the other controller still shorter than I would have liked the uh, original Super Nintendo controllers have a much like another two feet added to this is kind of the length of that controller so you're still gonna need to be pretty close to the SNES classic um, but it, it, it's, I'm, I'm thankful they at least added another foot foot and a half to the length of the controller and just for comparison's sake here's the the system and there's the controller and the system is about as long as the controller itself. Again, uh, a good comparison to see how small this thing actually is. And the end, obviously, it's the, uh, the modern... <clears throat> the end is the modern port that goes into the controller. And also, unlike the uh, NES Classic, it comes with two. We've got R1 controller here, and then they give another one here. So you don't have to go buy another one that actually has two controllers. Which is really nice, I appreciate that, Nintendo, since there's multiplayer games. And I want to play with my friends, you don't make me go buy another one, so you got your second controller right here. And uh, you can actually just play multiplayer right out of the box. You don't have to go hunting down uh, another classic controller like you did with the NES Classic. So that's, I appreciate that Nintendo, sincerely. Alright, now that we got this thing unboxed, uh, I'm gonna go play it for a little while and uh, I'll come back with my impressions. It's time to play it loud, with over 20 awesome games. Alright, so after about an hour messing around with this thing and uh, playing a few of the games, Super Mario World, 
Um, Super Mario RPG, a little bit of Mario Kart, a little bit of Contra, even though I'm bad, and, and Donkey Kong, obviously. Um, I'm impressed. It, it's about everything I expected. I, I really can't complain about that. It has similar options to the NES Classic, from what I understand. Uh, being able to play by in 4x3, you get the CRT like filter mode, as well as pixel perfect mode, uh, giving you plenty of different ways to play the game. And it looks gorgeous on an HD TV, which, I mean, makes sense. It is technically an HD system, an HD emulator. Uh, what I think is, is most enjoyable about it is the kind of just the ease of access to being able to just kind of scroll through the games and, and play them at your will. Um, they've added a lot of really nice kind of modern additions to, to make playing these kind of classic games, you know, useful. If you've played with an em emulator, then you kind of know what you're getting, though it's got Nintendo's little polish and flair to it, like save states. You can just kind of save the game wherever you want uh, and then, you know, pick up if you die and, and not have to worry about proper save points or uh, in games like Mario having to beat the level or whatever. If, if you need to bounce for whatever reason uh, and you want to turn the thing off, you, you can just go ahead and save state it and pick up where you want. Uh, it also has the option to rewind time like for a short amount so if you're playing something like super ghouls and goblins uh or was it super ghouls and Go god i can't super ghouls and ghosts <laughs> uh which is notoriously difficult and something i have not even thought about booting up yet uh and if you die you can rewind it and kind of just play through that that part over and over again until you kind of master it which is again a really nice feature that if you play on a modern emulator on a pc or something um is is really something you're used to but again having an official nintendo product with uh, the charm of having the physical like mini system in your hand and proper controllers that go along with it is just nice and playing it on your tv obviously is a really nice uh, addition the games look and play fantastically the the controllers were responsive and had no input delay that i could tell at the very least uh it ran perfectly fine and uh i'm not gonna lie it was definitely a little magical getting the controller in my hand and and, and playing with an snes controller again uh that was from nintendo again i have a few of the OG ones in my collection, um, but I don't really boot up my old SNES really that often. Um, I can definitely see myself using this more than hooking up my OG SNES. If I can get like a CRT TV or something and, and get my SNES hooked up that way, yeah, but for ease of access, literally just flipping this, this thing on and, and picking the game you want to play uh, is is enjoyable. Um, I, I really, really enjoy it. There's also a neat little Easter egg uh, if you end up getting one of these. Just sit on the main menu for about a minute and something cool happens. It's, it's just, it's, it's very Nintendo, it's very cute, and I, I like it a lot. Gripes about the system? Um, not many, honestly. I, I do think the controllers are still a little too short. I would have loved to see the original length of like the SNES controllers where they are like four or five feet long or whatever, which gives me plenty of, of space to sit back on my couch or a chair or something. But other than that, I think um, the other con the complaint that people have is, uh, and it's a minor one really, is, is if you want to go back to the main menu, there's no like combination of buttons you can press on the controller to bring you back to the menu. Uh, you have to hit the reset button to go back to the main menu. Um, not a huge deal, especially since you're forced to be near this thing anyway with the length of the controllers. Again, controller length is much longer than the NES Classic, but uh, the, the need to actually get up and press the button is can be annoying, especially, you know, if you're doing what I was doing where you're playing a bunch of games just kind of for a short period of time to get through them and, and kind of try them out and try out the different modes and stuff. Uh, outside of that, I have nothing nothing negative to say. This is a really cool addition to just my collection personally. Um, will I play this a ton? More than I would play, I think, an NES, NES Classic if I had one because Again, this is kind of what I grew up on, and obviously the games are a lot more robust and technically more impressive than the NES Classic stuff. My overall impression of SNES Classic, I'm a huge fan. Uh, I like it a lot. I'm excited to play a little bit more and uh, mess around with some of the other games when we get a proper game of Final Fantasy III going. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm impressed. So if you guys picked one up, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you guys enjoy the uh, the little collector's item? Why did you pick one up? Is it a nostalgia thing? Is it a collector's thing? Is it just kind of this neat little oddity for those who may be too young to have grown up in the SNES era like I did? I'm curious, but I, I really I really like handling this thing. It's it's really it's it's listen, I've already said it on the roundtable podcast before, I'll say it again. Um Nintendo is is making a market on selling you your nostalgia, and I will be there for every single purchase. I hope we get an N64 classic next because some of my fondest gaming memories comes from that era, because that's when I was in like my early teens. 
N64, early teens to mid teens before we end up hitting a, you know, obviously GameCube era. And I don't know if we're going to get a GameCube classic, but yeah, uh, I, I hope we get an, an N64 classic. This is a, uh, sell me my nostalgia back, Nintendo, and, but make it available, make it something I can easily get and add to my collection. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little weird unboxing kind of first impressions of a, of a product that a thousand people have already done videos on. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.